Hello, welcome to Homegrown Florida. I'm Petrina and today we are going to be talking about bolting. <laughs> bolting is just the term we use to describe a plant going to seed. This is very typical of all plants. All plants are going to produce a seed. The seed cycle of a plant is their way of reproducing and all plants eventually want to reproduce. Even the ones that you don't think actually produce seeds, like let's say potatoes, they in fact actually do produce a seed, um, but that's not the typical way that we grow them. We grow them from a replication of the root or a lot of the times we think about fruit trees and how they're grafted. But all of those plants do produce seeds. I can't really, I can't really think of a plant that doesn't, but I'm not going to say never <laughs> because I'm sure that there's some strange plant or something that I'm not thinking about that actually doesn't produce a seed. But for most of the plants that you're going to be growing in your garden, all of them will produce a seed. And some of them might look like this where they flower to produce the seed and others might look more like a tomato or a cucumber where the seed is encased inside of the fruit. Bolting is just a natural process of the plant's life cycle. So the plant starts out as a seed. It's kind of like the chicken and egg scenario. What came first, the plant or the seed? It's, it's hard to know. But <laughs> the seed is germinated, it becomes a small seedling and then it develops into a bigger plant. And at some point when it's coming towards the end of its life, it will know that it needs to reproduce and it creates the process by which it goes to reproduce, which is to produce the seeds. Now for us gardeners, <laughs> going to seed can sometimes be a negative because maybe we didn't get the harvest that we wanted from the plant before it went to seed. In some scenarios, going to seed or bolting does not affect uh, the taste, flavor, or edibility of the plant. However, with things like this guy right here, which is a bok choy, or the other lettuces that are in my bed here, going to seed makes these plants very, very, very unappealing to eat. <laughs> the taste is awful. It tastes very, very bitter. So once it starts to go to seed, that plant is pretty much done for in terms of eating it. Now, it's not like poisonous or anything like that. It doesn't become inedible in terms of being unsafe to eat. It's just, I couldn't imagine anybody who enjoys that taste. <laughs> Plants go to seed for probably about three or four reasons. Um, the first one being what we discussed, which is, is that it's its natural cycle. At some point in time, your plant will go to seed. If it's an annual, like this bok choy, it's going to do that within the season. If it is a perennial, it might take many years before it seeds or it might seed the first year and create another plant while it continues to live on. It really depends on the plant. The second reason why a plant goes to seed is because of the sunlight. <laughs> and so this one's a tricky one and it all has to do with the cycle of the earth and how much sunlight or lack of sunlight that occurs throughout the season. So sunlight is the way that the plants know that we're moving through seasons. Of course, temperature is as well. But sunlight is that first indicator. The days grow longer as you move through spring and into the summer. And then as you move to fall into the winter, the days get shorter. That's what we call the summer solstice and the winter solstice, which is going to tell you the longest day, longest day of sunlight in a year versus the shortest day of sunlight in a year. And as it moves towards that summer solstice, it's telling the plant that you're ending or you're coming closer to the end of your life cycle. Go ahead and start your uh, seed production. So that's number one. Not a whole lot you can do about that except for one tip I'm going to give you a little bit later. So stay tuned to the end because we're going to talk all about how you can prevent your plant from bolting. The second thing that can cause your plant to bolt is excessive heat. Okay, so that's what happened to this guy. <laughs> so he should not have bolted yet. It's, 
it should not have happened yet because we're not anywhere close to the end of the season. The day length hasn't changed considerably. I mean, we just literally had our winter solstice just a couple weeks ago. This shouldn't be going to seed. But what happened was we had, as you remember, a very, very cold winter. I mean, record winter here in Florida. <laughs> Never has gotten that cold in like 30 or 40 years or something crazy. And then... Three days later, it was 80 degrees. <laughs> and that temperature fluctuation was enough to make this plant think that we are further along in the season than what it expected. And it had started to bolt. Now this one right here is my actual oldest one. I have other bok choys all around it that were younger at the time that we hit that um, cold weather. And so they thankfully have not succumbed to that pressure of uh you know going from extreme cold to going to extreme warmth so they were not as impacted so that's a an, a keen little insight there that maybe the seedlings do a little bit better than the more mature plants when it comes to dealing with large fluctuations in temperature the fourth and final reason why something bolts is stress so if your plant and you may not be able to recognize this very easily but if your plant is struggling for nutrients, for water, for uh, bug activity, and it feels like its life is in jeopardy, the thing that it will want to do is go to seed because it wants to reproduce itself. And so if it encounters stress, it realizes that it's not going to last as long. And I'm, I'm saying this like it has feelings and thoughts and stuff. And I, I guess it does because it knows all these things. <laughs> it's very smart. Um, it will go to seed very quickly. So if you see that you haven't had a lot of daylight fluctuation, if your plants all around it are doing the same thing and you haven't had a whole lot of like these crazy wacky temperatures, you might need to look at your watering schedule and your fertilizer to determine whether it's getting too much water, too little water, too less fertilizer, too much. I mean, it really, it could be anything. It's, it's really interesting. Um, but if you see that happening across multiple plants, it could be that the plant is stressed or that the several plants are stressed. So those are the typical reasons why your plant is going to seed. Now, going to seed is a process. The first step in the process is that your plant will start to lengthen and the stem in the center will begin to thicken. You can kind of see that here. This is a pretty extreme example. I let this go quite a bit because I wanted to show you guys, but in a, a less obvious example you can see here I have a lettuce plant that is going to seed um, before it even has the flowers or the little pods on top it is starting to get tall you know <laughs> lettuce usually stays compact and close to the ground but this guy is getting like tall and lengthy uh, that is your first clue that it's going to seed. And you can still harvest at this point. The, the greens are not very bitter. Um, if you want some tips, if it did get a little bit bitter and you just want to salvage the last of that harvest, I'll put up a video here on how I deal with bitter lettuce or bitter greens to take some of that bite out of it so that you can get that last harvest. But once you start seeing that lengthening or that height beginning to occur, you know you're not far down the process of bolting. The second indicator is, is that in the center of the plant, you will start to see what looks like a tiny little broccoli floret. <laughs> and that's actually just the buds of the flower that's going to come out. It's the buds that show up first. Once again, the minute you see those, you know that you need to get whatever harvested that you possibly can because it is going to go to seed. You could cut that off and you know, try to delay a little bit. I've never had success with that. I don't know if anybody uh, has. If you have, head down in the comments, let me know. But I have never had success with cutting it. I have tried multiple times. All that happens is, is the, the greens still get bitter. It still gets really uh, not tasty. And then these guys pop from different places on the stem. <laughs> so once it's headed that direction, you really, you're down, a, you're down a path that you can't get back from. The next step in the bolting process is, is those little buds are going to actually break open and like these are going to create these little yellow flowers or it could be lots of different color flowers. Helpful hint here, if you don't have a lot of bees or pollinator activity in your yard and you want to attract them, 
leave these guys to flower and go nuts and you will suddenly see tons of bees. They absolutely adore bolted plants. <laughs> I don't know why, you know, whatever. It's cool. They love it. So I leave multiples in my yard for, for another reason, which is I'm going to save this seed. This plant did incredibly well. I mean, and this variety that I have has done very, very remarkable in our heat. So even though this one has bolted from that extreme temperature, uh, before that point, when we were dealing with high 80s every single day, this one was still growing and it still tasted really well. And unfortunately, I can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember the variety of this bok choy, which is another reason why I'm saving the seed, because since I can't remember it and I knew it grew really well, I'm going to let this go ahead and go to seed. I'm not going to disrupt it. I'm going to let it get tall, high, flower. Bees are going to come. It's going to be great. And then after it's done that process, it's going to create little pods and those will have seeds. And I'll collect those and those will be the ones that I grow next fall. Now let's talk about how to keep these guys from bolting. There are a couple ways that you can prevent plants from bolting. First and foremost, do not plant in the heat of summer. Uh, these greens really like colder weather. Now there are some greens that actually can grow in the heat, but they're few and far between. So for the most part, unless you have found a variety that is known for growing in our Florida summers, you definitely want to stick to cooler weather times. I usually like to grow my greens somewhere around, I start them in October and I will grow them all the way to April. May if I'm pushing a really heat tolerant variety. <laughs> but if you stick to the cooler weather, typically, not this year, but typically you don't have these large fluctuations and it stays cool enough at night that the plants enjoy that particular temperature. Another reason to plant during that fall winter time frame is that the daylight is shorter. So like we talked about earlier with the winter solstice, this is the shortest number of hours of sunlight during the day. And so this helps the plant not bolt, is that you're leading into short day lengths versus long day lengths, like in, like in spring and summer. This will also decrease its likelihood of bolting too early. A third trick that I use for growing my greens is I grow them in shade. <laughs> These poor things are probably getting like almost no sunlight <laughs> because I plant them during the shortest daylights of the year. And then I also put them in a bed that only gets about I don't know, this bed gets maybe three hours of sun a day, which is not a lot. But as you can see, they're doing fine. <laughs> they absolutely do not mind all the shade. And when we get closer to that April, May time frame where I'm really pushing the zones there or pushing the time frames of the season, these are going to have the best likelihood of hanging on longer because they do get so much shade in this area. Now you don't want to necessarily do this with uh, very heat loving varieties like tomatoes, cucumbers, squashes, watermelons, corn, beans. You don't want to do that with them. Before your leafy greens, this is an ideal spot. The fourth thing to make sure with your greens is that the soil is not compacted. And you don't typically have that problem when you're dealing with a raised bed, but if you're growing in the ground, or even in a container that maybe you haven't refreshed that soil very often. You wanna make sure that you get some aeration. And you can do that you know, by digging. You can do that with a um, small you know, hand tiller, like a mechanical hand tiller. There's a lot of different ways. Um, I find that the easy way to keep the soil from getting compacted is just to add significant amount of organic material. I use grass, wood chips, leaves, plant tops, the debris from the plants, every, it's that chop and drop mentality. I just cut whatever I'm not using or whatever is going to go in the composter and I just leave it right in here. And that layer that it's creating is helping to create that aeration and it keeps it from getting compacted. Of course, do not walk in your beds. <laughs> that will immediately lead to compaction and that is going to be a problem. The fifth way to keep your plants from bolting is consistent watering. So like we talked about earlier, stress can cause these guys to bolt. It thinks that their life is going to end soon and it bolts. So 
if we make sure that they are constantly getting watered upon a regular frequency, the plant begins to expect that frequency. So whether that is two times a week or three times a week in your garden, make sure it's consistent. If it rains that day, and it's a good rain, not like a sprinkle, but a good rain, you don't have to water that day. You can let the rain do its job. If it rains excessively for many days, you may want to hold off a couple days because you don't want them to drown or, or become waterlogged. The sixth thing that you can do to prevent bolting is to mulch heavy. This is such an important thing down here in the south. It doesn't matter if it's winter here or not. We can be sitting in 80 and 90 degrees. It is, it's just how it is down here. So the way to keep the plant from thinking that it's going through some sort of heat stress here is to keep it mulched. Even if the top leaves get hot, as long as the roots stay cool, you're less likely of a chance of having it bolt. And mulch keeps water in, keeps heat in, keeps cold in. It's really like the perfect insulator. So have a heavy hand, put leaves, grass clipping, wood chips, whatever you have. I've used newspaper in the past. <laughs> whatever you have, keep it mulched, keep it mulched thick. The next way that you can prevent bolting is to pick varieties that are slow to bolt. I wanna be very specific here because slow to bolt or bolt resistant varieties don't necessarily mean the same thing to us here in the south where we deal with heat as well so bolt resistance and heat tolerance are kind of two different things so a bolt resistant may just mean that it's not as affected by the change in the number of hours of daylight so the daylight length whereas heat resistance is telling you that if it incurs enough heat it will be less likely to bolt from excessive heat those are two different things because we have friends up north during the summer that can be sitting in the 60s all day long and theirs can still bolt because of the daylight length or we can be down here in Florida where we don't really have that big of a fluctuation in our daylight hours. We go from like 9 to 12 hours a year. <laughs> so it's not that big of a difference when it comes to, to the slow bolt variety when it comes to the daylight sensitivity. Ours is around heat resistance. So if you can find a variety that says that it is heat resistant and also slow to bolt, those are the ones to be chasing after. Now, if you've tried all those tips and you're still having problem with bolting, here are a couple suggestions that I can make to you. And these are things that I do in my garden too. I would never suggest something that I don't already do. And the first thing I do is I do not rely on heading varieties when it comes to my lettuce. I look for non-heading varieties. I would absolutely love to be able to grow a beautiful big iceberg head of lettuce. That is not gonna happen. I've come to terms with that. <laughs> that is just not gonna happen here in Florida. Maybe some of you guys have been lucky that way or you figured out a trick and definitely let me know because I'm very curious <laughs> if that's even possible. But I stick to a lot of the non-heading varieties and use them more like loose leaf lettuce. Now, I have found some varieties that make very big leaves, non-heading varieties, particularly in the um, Chinese cabbage mustard family, the Tokyo Beckena. Love it. I cannot even, I cannot speak more highly of that particular variety because it creates these huge, beautiful, leafy lettuce yellow they're kind of like a yellowish green type leaf and they're huge they're like the size of my head <laughs> and they are great for things like lettuce wraps or um, if you want to do like a stuffed cabbage or something like that they're really really good for uses like what we would use iceberg for in that particular instance another thing i do is i harvest very very early my plants will have seven or eight leaves on them and I'm taking the seventh and eighth leaf. <laughs> I am literally harvesting these guys as soon as they are big enough to hold out on their own. I leave only three or four leaves at the center of the plant and I take everything out of the outside through that cut and come again method. And I'll um, put up a link over here to my method that I've used that 
gets me tons and tons and tons of lettuce every single season. So make sure to check that one out. But always harvest early. Don't wait. If you wait, it will bolt. Happens to me every time. Another thing is look for those tropical varieties. I Even though we can grow a lot of the traditional varieties during our winter, what happened during Christmas was another reminder to me that, you know, even if the season looks like it's going to be perfect and I really want to grow that beautiful head of romaine, I need to have a plan B. Sure, try the head of romaine. Try the iceberg lettuce. Have another option. Have a tropical variety option, something that is meant to grow in this type of environment, in this type of heat. Those, if you can find some, some of them I don't like, some of them I really love, but if you can just practice those and maybe find a few that you really, really like, those are going to be your workhorse in the garden. They are going to produce and produce like crazy. It's all about variety here. And so definitely start dabbling into those tropical varieties and see if you have a better outcome than the more traditional ones. Another option if you have just completely lost patience with dealing with the heat and the fluctuation in temperatures and maybe some stress on the plants, you can grow indoors. <laughs> I grow indoor all summer long. I grow all of our lettuce indoor during the summer. So once May hits, my arrow gardens inside are pumping out lettuce. And while they don't put out as much as my bed does on a typical harvest, it is offsetting the cost of our salads that we would buy from the grocery store. I recently got, for Christmas, from Santa, my mom, <laughs> we got a arrow garden farm which holds 24 pods 24 pods is basically like having a head of lettuce a day for 24 days. And most lettuce varieties will grow at least to the point where you can do cut and come a bit again within that 30 day time period. So I suspect that this summer we should not have to buy very much lettuce from the grocery store, which I am very, very stoked about. It's it's a cool thing to have. I understand that this particular one, the farm is a bit on the expensive side, but they do have a lot cheaper models like the Harvest or the Bounty. Um, I'll put all those in the description if you're interested in checking them out. Also, besides Arrow Garden, there are other manufacturers or brands that do something similar. And if you just want to go the old school route and not have like a hydroponic system, you can definitely put these guys in pots with grow lights it's basically the same principle <laughs> growing inside where our air conditioner takes care of the fluctuation of temperature and our grow lights take care of the day length and all of those things will help you be able to grow your lettuce any time of year i hope you found this video helpful make sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll talk to you next time mm -hmm.